Welcome to Rose Red Homestead. Today we are going to do pressure canning of pulled pork. This was one of the meals that was featured in our video, Meals in Bags. So when we come right back, we will get started. ultimately 50 of these meals in bags. It's an entree with everything that I need to put a meal together. This one is pulled pork. And while I featured that one in our previous video, I didn't talk at all about how to pressure can pulled pork, which we are going to do today. But I thought I would just show you what is in here. First of all, I have a pint of pulled pork. And you may notice how runny it is. But look, there's a ton of meat in there, all that lovely pork. And so this is what we're going to be doing today. Now the reason that I do these in pints for us is that this pint of pulled pork uh, produces a full entree for Jim and me. And you know pulled pork is generally associated with wonderful yummy sandwiches. But we also use it over rice and this is a vacuum sealed package of wild rice. And pulled pork is delicious over this wild rice. So I can just go pull this off the shelf at a moment's notice and cook the rice and heat up the pulled pork. It needs to be flaked because it's still in cubes in these jars, but then within about a half an hour, 45 minutes, because it takes wild rice a little bit longer to cook, we can have a lovely meal with almost zero effort on my part, which makes it wonderful. So I'm gonna set this aside and we are going to get right to it. So I have set out here some of the things that um, could be used for making pulled pork. Now pulled pork, as I'm sure you know, requires both a rub and a barbecue sauce. And a lot of people are very particular. They have their recipes, some of them are secret recipes, and you can find all kinds of different recipes online. And um, I am not so particular. I love pulled pork in any way, shape, or form. And so uh, there are a couple of options that we have. One option is that you can go with everything store-bought. Now, if I were going to do that, we have a Traeger smoker, so we really like the Traeger rubs. Now, if I were going to be doing this from a store-bought rub, I would blend these two, and this is pork and poultry, and this is, um, just the Traeger rub, which has garlic and chili pepper in it. So I would combine these two rubs, and that's what I would use for the rub for pulled pork. Now the other thing is a good barbecue sauce. Now Jim and I really do like Masterpiece. It is called Casey Masterpiece Private Stock, and it comes from Costco. We like this one just fine, but sometimes I do both rub and sauce from scratch, Sometimes I will do one or the other from scratch and then the other one from store-bought. So you can just do it whatever way you want to. Today, we're going to use my scratch rub recipe. So we're not going to be using the Traeger rubs, but we are going to be using the KC Masterpiece. However, there are, there's one ingredient not in either this um, barbecue sauce or in the rub, um, and that is onions. And so for that reason, I'm going to put a few of our dehydrated onions into this mix. Um, so I'm going to put these Traeger rubs out of the way. Jen just brought the onions that we're going to use. So I'm gonna put those out here. Now here is my scratch rub. And um, I will make it up in large amounts and just keep it in a jar. But I want to go ahead and give you that recipe right now, so if you are interested, that you will be able to use this recipe. So this recipe is one tablespoon chili powder, one tablespoon brown sugar, 
one tablespoon smoked paprika, and I'm gonna show you that smoked paprika in just a moment, one half teaspoon celery salt, and I use my own homemade celery salt, which I demonstrated in the dehydrating celery um, video. One teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of cumin, one half teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and salt and pepper to taste. So I have made this up probably five or six times the recipe in here. And so this is what we're going to use today. Now, if I should run out of my homemade, then we will open up the Traeger and use that as well. Now, um, here is the smoked paprika, and I have to tell a little story about this smoked paprika. A number of years ago, I was with a colleague in Washington, D.C. We were presenting a paper, and uh, from our conference, we had a little bit of spare time, so we walked around Georgetown and found a fabulous kitchen store. And she is a wonderful gourmet cook, and she said, Pam, you have to buy this smoked paprika. Well, I had never even heard about smoked paprika. So I reluctantly bought one, thinking I was being talked into something that I would never use. But, oh my goodness, when I used the last little bit of this, my heart was broken because I knew that I wasn't gonna be going to Georgetown anytime soon. Fortunately, I went online and found it. And so this smoked paprika gives a fabulous taste. I use it on so many things. I use it in potato salad. It's wonderful over um, deviled eggs. Anything with eggs or potatoes in it, anything that you would normally use paprika with that you might want a little bit of a smoked flavor, this is fabulous. This is my homemade celery salt, and it has such a wonderful fresh flavor. I dehydrated celery some time ago, and demonstrated in that video how to make up this celery salt. So the other ingredients are just right here and I'm actually gonna just move them out of the way now too because we need lots of room to do what we are going to do. Now here are some of my dehydrated onions. Now if you've watched the dehydrating um, homegrown green onions, you may recognize these as the necks of green onions. I dehydrate um, separately the green stems, the middle piece, which are the necks, that's what these are, and then the bulb ends. Because I like to use them separately in recipes, and this is a good case in point, because I like to use these necks um, in our uh, pulled pork. So here's what we're going to do. Jim and I spent a couple of nights ago cubing up 12 pounds of pork shoulder. We usually get our pork shoulder at Costco. It is generally a really good price. And um, so he got some there and then some at our regular grocery store. So I'm going to put some cubes in this smaller bowl because I'm going to do it in um, smaller batches. It's easier to handle. And then we are going to just do the directions that I've given before for raw pack meat. Nothing could be simpler than doing raw pack meat and that's what we're gonna do today. I don't have any idea how many pints this is going to do. I have 16 pint jars washed and ready here, and that will fill my canner. So I don't know that we'll get quite there, but I'm just going to take some of these in a smaller batch and put them right in this bowl. And then I'm going to open up the rub. And I'm just going to sprinkle some of the rub on here, enough that I think that will cover every side of every piece of this meat. And I'm just going to work it in. Needs just a little bit more. Ooh, I can smell the chili. Okay, so it looks like everything is covered really well. Then I'm going to open up, well, I need some traction here. I opened my refrigerator as I was getting ready to do this video and I found two partially used bottles of this barbecue sauce. Do you ever do that? I know it used to happen to me a lot when I had children at home, but, um, 
It rarely happens to Jim and me, but it certainly did this time. Okay. And then once again, I'm just going to get in with my hands and work this through, making sure that there's plenty of barbecue sauce all over this meat. And so it's nice and gushy. Rinsing hands again. keep this dish towel handy I'm going to be needing it and then on this washcloth I'm going to put one of my let me move things out here forgot the onions oh this is vacuum sealed of course it won't come right off Sprinkle a few onions. Oh my goodness, they smell so good. And I'll mix those around while I am filling this jar. So I'm gonna set this aside so you can see this. So I'm just going to then reach in here and give these onions a little mix, and then we'll just fill up this jar. No need for any other liquid or anything else. Now the pork is going to make its own liquid as it is pressure canned. And that is why it was so liquidy. But I have it just pretty jam packed with the meat. Okay, we'll do another one. And here's jar number two. Now I'm going to continue filling these. Maybe I'll do one more batch so you can see just what it does one more time and then I'll go off camera to finish the rest. Okay, rinsing hands again. And another batch of the chunks into the bowl. Liberal sprinkling of, sprinkling of the rub. And then mixing that rub in. A little bit more. And now the barbecue sauce. And the onions. Well, I'm all onioned up. And we'll finish filling this jar. Nothing could be easier than this. Well, just about nothing. And these make, obviously, pulled pork is one of our favorite meals because I'm running low on pulled pork out on our um, shelves outside. So that's why we decided to go ahead and do another great big batch. So 
So this is jar number five. Okay, get one or two more in there. Jim has the canner already preheating with a little bit of water in the bottom outside, so we'll be ready to put these in the canner just as soon as we finish here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and finish this off camera, and I'll be back just as soon as we have all of the pork chunks uh, taken care of. Wow, what a mess. I have barbecue sauce all over my shirt. It was all the way up my arms. The jars are all gunky with barbecue sauce. So I thought I would bring you back uh, to show you how I do the last three. These are all ready to go into the canner, but I have three more to go. So what I do here is I bring it over onto this washcloth and I use a just a plain kitchen knife to run down the side to release any air. You may have noticed I filled these pretty full, which I do a lot of times. And then I whack it on the washcloth and then I'm getting a clean paper towel stamp. And instead of just running around the very top edge, which I always do, I'm also cleaning the threads this time because in my handling the jars with my barbecue sauce hands, I may have gotten some sauce in the threads. And then I have clean lids and rings that I'm putting on right here. And then because I handled the jars with my saucy hands, I'm also just going to run those under hot water in the sink to make sure that they're all clean. So it's a pretty quick process. And you want to get as much meat in here as possible. The meat is going to shrink and add its liquid to the jar. So when you open it up, it's going to be quite liquidy. So this is what has to happen after you've opened up the jar once you've uh, canned them. Um, you'll need to pour just the liquid part into a pot and then if you want it thicker than it is, which I do, I just add a little bit of flour and thicken up the uh, liquid and then I put pour the pork chunks into a separate bowl and with two forks I just shred it so that it can look like pulled pork because we canned it as chunks and that's not how the finished product will look. Okay, we got 10 pints with 12 pounds of meat and um, we cut off quite a bit of fat and waste so we probably had maybe 10 pounds of meat when we were done. Hard to kind of know. But these probably have about a pound of pork in each jar. And that's plenty enough for Jim and me. And boy, do we love this stuff. I learned how to do pork, pulled pork in Texas when my first husband and I lived there. And I fixed it a lot of different ways and I really can't say that I have a favorite. So, 10 pints, that's not too bad. Now when we get out to the canner, I'm going to put these in two layers. I will put five on the bottom, and then I will put my other rack on the top of those jars, and then I'll put five more on the top of that. Now, if your family is larger than mine, which most families are these days, since we're only two, and um, <clears throat> If you want to do pulled pork in larger sizes in quarts, it works just the same. It works just great. And so we will process these pints for 75 minutes. If you're going to do quarts, you will want to process them at 90 minutes. And then be sure to check um, in um, an official chart from the USDA, and you can just look these up on the internet if you don't have a, a cookbook, um, to tell you how many pounds pressure you need to do low acid foods. For us, it is 13 pounds pressure, we're at 5,000 feet. Um, pretty much the way it goes is anything below 1,000 can do it at 10 pounds pressure. Anything above 1,000 feet of elevation does it at 15 pounds pressure if you only have the choice 
of 10 or 15 pounds on your pressure canner. Those of us that have the dial canners, which if you haven't seen me out there with my canner, um, you'll see it when we go out, uh, we can do a little more exacting pressure measure because we have a dial. And so we always keep it between 13 and 15. So that canner is ready out there, the water is simmering, so I will um, meet you out at the canner and we will close it up and get started. I'm just covered with sauce. I'm going to have to wash this blouse so that it doesn't stain. But we'll meet out there. So here we are out at my canning center. It's a beautiful spring day. It's May here on the Colorado Plateau. But our canner is here and if you'll come take a close look, we have five pints in there and it's just barely boiling. That's exactly what we want. Now I'm going to get the second shelf and just place that right over the top of those. And then I'm going to be bringing the other ones over. And stacking them around. I'm looking through the holes and I'm trying to sort of alternate where the... Did we get 11 quarts? I've got six here. We put five on the bottom, didn't we? Oh, well, we did. It'll work. So anyway, we have now six on the top, so we might have 11. Maybe I miscounted. So now I'm going to put the lid on. I'm going to turn the camera around so we can see the dial. Ooh, that's heavy. Okay, so the next thing that will happen is that um, we're going to turn it up just a little bit right here, and then steam will start to exit this vent. And we're going to let that steam vent for 10 minutes so that it replaces all of the air inside the canner with steam, which is exactly what we want. Then this little mechanism will pop up. This is the air vent. And so it will pop up and then the dial will start to move. And once this dial gets up here to 13 pounds pressure, then we will start counting for 75 minutes. And then after 75 minutes, we'll turn the heat off and let it cool down naturally. And when it, everything, all the steam is gone and the needle is back down to zero, then we will come back out, open up the canner and see what we've got. So we will see you probably in about a couple of hours. So the question is, how many PhDs does it take to count to 11? Well, it must take more than one if that one is me, because I couldn't count to 11. That's how many pints we have in here. So first I thought it was 10, then I thought it was 11. So in any case, we're finished, and I'm in a clean shirt. So let's see what we've got. I'm going to tip this to see if all the steam has escaped, and it has. And our air vent lock is down, so that means that we have no steam, and it's safe to open. Oh, it smells so good. So here we have a pint of pulled pork ready to go. Oh, I can smell it. It smells so good. We just might have to have some of this for supper. So I'm going to put these over here on these racks. So we have 11, yes folks count them, 11 pints of pulled pork all pulled from the canner. And we'll let these cool out here for a few hours until they're completely cool. 
then they ended up being a little bit messy because when you stack them on top of each other, if any leaks occur, it will drip down to the bottom row, and that's what happened here as well. But they seem to be okay. I've been hearing a little bit of popping, so maybe they're beginning to um, pop, which is a really good sign. In any case, this has been a very successful canning segment. There was one. And um, we just may have pulled pork for supper tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. And